Hello all and welcome to the second video in my channel Cricket X Data. I hope you liked the first one where we talked about extracting uh, player data from Crickinfo. Uh, so the second uh, uh, video, actually this is going to be a, more of a playlist where uh, I'm going to have two parts uh, in this playlist. The first part talking about how to extract uh, ball by ball data and the second part linking it up to a particular player's uh, uh, test matches or the particular players uh, set of games so yeah basically if you want to do uh, some kind of an analysis say if you want to take uh, Virat Kohli's ball by ball data across his career how do we go about doing that uh, where do we find the ball by ball data from and how do you process that and uh, make sure that you get all of Virat Kohli's test matches captured neatly in a particular file so an example of how that looks like is something like this uh, where you have uh, different uh, different set of attributes about uh, Virat Kohli's uh, set of balls that he's faced. So you can take a look at this uh, length of the data, which is having uh, pretty much every ball which Kohli has faced in his test career, about 13,000 balls, and what has happened of each delivery and who's the bowler who's bowled the ball and how much runs were scored of it, etc. So... How do we go about doing this? The the first thing is uh, like we saw in the last video, you need a good data source and Cricksheet is a website which has been doing a pretty good job of collating ball by ball data across pretty much uh, uh, every single cricket game uh, which has been happening. So they've been having, as they have uh, mentioned here, uh, data from 2007 and 2004 respectively for men and for women and men. So you can take a look at the website cricksheet.org and uh, uh, you can play around with it. So I personally prefer uh, their new format of files, which is the CSV format, uh, which you can find under the download section all the way in the bottom. So they have different attributes of data across uh, pretty much all formats. They have test matches, they have uh, ODIs, they even have uh, tournaments like the BBL, IPL, and the PSL, which is being captured. So uh, this is this is the new format. Um, they ha also have another format called the original format. Now, I'm not going to dive deeper into what is the difference between these two. I personally prefer the new format, and uh, those interested can read up uh, what is the exact difference between these two formats. But I'm just going to show you what a file under this new format looks like. So I'm hovering over this new link. There is a... As you can see on the bottom left of the screen, um, there is a zip file uh, URL which is appearing. So when you unzip the files, you'll get basically 665 uh, set of CSV files which have data for all uh, test matches uh, from 2004 onwards if I'm not wrong. And they also have something called a readme file which gives you the names of the uh, games which have been played and what... Uh, uh, what is the unique uh, identifier and the file name for that? So I'm just going to take an example of a single file uh, of uh, what has been extracted out of uh, uh, Cricksheet's test match data. So this is uh, the recently concluded India-England test match data. So this is the match ID for that. So when you go to 124387.csv, uh, you will find this data set. And this pretty much has... Uh, uh, the information across all the three innings which happened in that game, uh, each ball, who was the striker in that ball, who was the non-striker, who was the bowler of the ball, and what exactly happened within that delivery. So it captures the uh, the runs which are scored of bat and uh, whether it was anything to do with leg buys or extras or what happened in terms of wickets, Dom Sibley bowled by Akshar Patel. So pretty interesting set of data. And... Uh, one that will serve as a very good starting point for doing most analysis in cricket and uh, um, that's that's going to be the main focus of uh, the part one of this video how do you extract this uh, data in an automated way so let's head uh, straight to the collab environment uh, which i've prepared and again i'm making use of pretty simple packages here it's just pandas basically and i'm just pasting the url which i showed a while back the test match url I'm just going to initialize that under the Cricksheet URL variable. Now, here's where things get a bit complicated when you want to work across formats. Uh, you want to have uh, something which is generic and works uh, with pretty much 
uh, all kinds of data sets now i don't want to be uh, so i don't want to be going and mentioning the format or what i'm extracting each time i'm running the script so all i'm going to do is just enter the crick sheet url and i want all the data files inside that to be loaded onto my file system so now in collab uh, the file system is something uh, which has been uh, provided to you uh, as part of the launch setup so you can see that it's pretty much uh, sufficient for doing most of the work it has about 69 gb of data uh, which is which you can use to host your files and data sets but do remember uh, in collab uh, it is runtime dependent so uh, whatever files you are storing are going to be there only for the particular session and it's not going to be persisted across different sessions so you can make use of this 69 gb in this particular session and once you relaunch or come back tomorrow uh, this probably will be gone because you're going to restart the cluster so do do be uh, aware of that part but uh, what i am showing you can pretty much be done in a single uh, single session itself so you don't need to worry too much about that you just uh, can follow the steps here so the first step here is to kind of understand more about how to split the URL. So now I want a directory name and the location of the files to be stored automatically. So I'm having this Crick sheet URL and I'm going to go about and split that on uh, the delimiter. In this case, the delimiter is the slash sign. So what happens when I do that? Uh, I get a set of uh, tokens like these. And now I want uh, the file name to be stored. Uh, this is the file name which I'll be downloading from the internet, from the Crick Sheet website to be specific. Now to access this, all I do is just uh, use the index minus one, which gives the last element in any list in Python. So that's the file name. And that's what I've been storing as the zip file variable here. And I go one more step and I'm just going to do one more split on the dot zip part. So when I split it here, you'll get this as the first uh, token and you'll get the dot zip as the second one. You can see it here. Now in Python indexing starts from zero. So I'm just going to take the first part alone and that will be the tests underscore mail underscore CSV2. Now what do I do with it? I initialize this as uh, something called the folder name, which I'll be making use of in a very short while. So now is the interesting part. I'm going to do four set of commands uh, which are going to help uh, make life easier for you. You don't need to uh, change pretty much anything in the below set of commands when you run for other Crick Sheet URLs or uh, you can use this as a pretty much uh, general tip for unzipping different files on Colab as well. So what I've done in the first step is equivalent to what I'm showing here. So wget is a Linux command line utility which helps you to unzip and which helps you to basically download files from the internet. Sorry, it's not unzipping, it's just going to download the files from the internet. So I have this URL, I'm going to download this uh, file. Uh, now I'm just doing that in a much more neater way where I'm passing the dollar crick sheet URL. So dollar indicates that this is a parameter and crick sheet URL is the variable we saw above. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this wget uh, command. Uh, Q is basically the location from where you want to download it. And when I execute this, you see something interesting happening on the file system. If you notice previously, there wouldn't be any file here, but now you can see this appearing. So basically what this has done is downloaded the zip file, the test underscore mail CSV zip file onto this uh, onto this uh, file system which I have. So you can see that uh, some amount of data has been taken away. And the next thing I do is create a directory called the variable under the uh, folder name. So the folder name is test underscore mail CSV2. I want all the files to be stored under this directory. So I'm just going to execute that command mkdir uh, dir and that's going to give me the directory. Now there is no file inside this. What do I do with this? Uh, I'm going to do the next step where I'm unzipping all the files which are there as part of this zip file. And I'm just going to uh, use this directory here and move all the files onto that one because that's going to make things neater. You'll get all your tests underscore mail CSV2 under the particular directory. 
So this step is essentially what you do on a typical computer. You download the zip file and you use your WinRAR or zip, uh, zip directories to unzip the file and store that and then move that into some other directory. So that's what this command is doing. Uh, so O is basically an argument to overwrite if it's already been unzipped and Q is basically just pointing out uh, to the particular zip file which I want to unzip. So in this case, this is this zip file and the destination is the folder name. Now is where the interesting part happens. You can open this directory. Uh, once you open this directory, you will see all the files which are there inside the test underscore mail csv2 zip. It's taking a bit of time because uh, there are a lot of files inside that. Yeah, there you go. You get all the files inside uh, which have uh, basically every test match data. This is about 600 uh, test matches which Cricksheet has managed to capture all the way back from 2004 onwards. So that's the first step uh, in downloading this data set. Uh, now I don't want uh, these are pretty optional commands to be doing. So I'm I'm just uh, having a bit of an OCD and I don't want this zip file to be there as part of my file system. So I can just go ahead and remove that using the rm command. Once I do that, you can see that this particular zip file would be gone. So yeah, you click refresh and you'll see that that zip file is not there. You free up some kind of disk space on that, on that side. So that's pretty much the first part uh, of this video where you saw how to download from any given Cricksheet URL. You can use this for uh, pretty much any uh, other URL as well. And these commands work fairly well across uh, mainly Linux and Mac systems. For Windows, you can make use of something called the curl commands. Uh, but if you're using Colab, uh, that's the good part about it. You don't need to be worrying about what OS you are using. You can just come into Colab and create a notebooks and uh, play around with this. In the next part, uh, uh, I'm going to talk about how to process the uh, readme file, which is there as part of this uh, zip files. So when you download the uh, zip file, you will get some kind of a readme file inside that. So let me show you uh, using the manual way of downloading this. So I'm going to download this uh, new file onto my desktop. So I have just downloaded the test match file from here and you can see it here on my directory that there, there is like 666 items, basically 665 files for each of the test matches. And there's something called a readme file, which you can find all the way in the bottom of the directory. Now, this is a pretty interesting file. This has information on each of the test matches, uh, which have been stored in that particular folder. Now, there's a lot of text inside this. Uh, the interesting part starts from this line onwards where you have information on each of the test matches. So if you take a look at this particular number, it says that this was the date of the test match and uh, this was the test match between Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. And under this file name, you will find the information for Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. So this is that file. I'm opening the file here. And there you see the information for uh, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. So this is how Cricksheet data looks like uh, when you take a look at uh, uh, each of the variables. Now in the next video, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, going to tell viewers on how do we go about uh, getting this, uh, uh, processing this readme so that it can be made use for further analysis. So until then, uh, please do stay safe and stay home. Uh, uh, please uh, take care of yourself and uh, when you have the time, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel Cricket X Data and looking forward to uploading more videos. Thank you and have a good day.